G'day everyone, welcome to our devlog series where we'll give an insight into our work on our current game as well as anything else so cute. The devlogs will cycle through our team so we get a look into what each of our individual contributions to SoulCube are. My name's Dash and you're stuck with me this week as we take a look into what I get up to during my Soul Cube time. Tonight, strong winds and unstoppable flames. So powerful, they stir up fire twisters of their own. 12 million acres. Estimated half a billion animals have died. Uh... Okay, so uh, this video is meant to be a recap on a week's worth of work with a scheduled release date of over a month ago. If you've been up to date with us on Discord and or the podcast, you'll know that we've been pretty hindered by the bushfires. It's obvious that this vid ain't no week's recap. Instead, I'll be covering where the game's foundation is currently at and the few things I did manage to get done through the six weeks of chaos. The current list of features we've got working in the game includes... Dynamic 2.5D Lighting. This is a big thing for us to get working, as we're really happy with the visual enhancement it gives the world, adding way more depth. The only thing we really want to clear up here is to fix the shadows Peter Panning. Peter Panning just refers to this offset between the object and the shadow cast. We can increase this offset by increasing the bias. However, at the minimum bias of zero, there's still a clear unwanted offset. I tried looking into this, however, it seems like a really common issue with Unity lighting, not just with our bootleg 2.5D shadows. You can see the same Peter Panning happening with a regular 3D plane. We may have to look into how to code a custom shader that will force the bias more, if that's even possible. However, this is going into the backlog unless a simple solution comes up in the meantime. The lighting system is kind of broken up into two parts. The actual sprites receiving and casting shadows themselves, as well as the sprites appearing in the correct visual ratio to the camera so that it still appears as if it's on a 2D plane. We use a little bit of basic trig based around the system that Dungeon the Endless uses for their 2.5D lighting. TLDR is all sprites are scaled relative to the camera angle, so they always appear in the correct ratio. I've got a tutorial for this entire system coming, so if you want more info on the reasoning behind why this trig works, stay tuned for that in the future. We've also got some really basic things in the game, such as a placeholder episode selection screen that saves your progress between startups of the game, as well as some functionality added to the camera so it's easy to control its movement in the future. The camera can easily get set target destinations and will smoothly transition between targets. We can also set boundaries that the camera will not go past, however this system may need to be reworked to account for more irregular shapes in the map uh, and a better visualisation of the boundaries in the editor. Also set up a little system that makes it easy for us to add functions to trigger zones or clickable objects. I took reference from the way you add functions to the Unity buttons and transferred that over to some custom classes for clickable objects and trigger zones. I've also got a basic scaffold down for a dialogue system making it easy for us to set up scenes quickly and clearly visualise how the dialogue will look. The text is positioned in world space, keeping the game more grounded and allowing us to get a little creative with where the text is positioned in the scene. I've also vaguely set up the scenes in relation to what's written in our script. However, the scenes themselves are all just placeholders at the moment. I'll be beginning to go through them and block them out one by one, including coding all the unique mechanics for the scenes that require unique gameplay. During the free time I've managed to muster in the past month, I did want to improve how the prototype visually looked. There were seriously some pretty dodgy placeholder assets, either coming from our last game or just random stock images. The issue with using the assets from our last game, which looked nice, um, was that people were staking them for the actual assets, so they had to, they had to, they had to, they had to go. It was at this point I started setting up the animations for the walk cycles. I got lead artist Monarch to import me a set of default walks and idols so I could use those for all the placeholder assets. I also worked in the animations for the small man, the main character in Act 2. Another thing I really wanted to try and get fixed was the camera aspect ratio. For some context, we use a pixel perfect camera which requires a certain ratio to be specified. This shades off the space outside of this ratio in all the scenes with the pixel perfect script attached to the camera. The scaling does not affect the UI elements, so whenever UI is spanning the entire screen width, it doesn't take into account the forced aspect ratio. Spent far too long trying to work out how to force the aspect ratio of a project. It seemed needlessly hard. Literally no settings I changed had any effect on the ratio, and I was tilting. Sake, what could it be? Would you just put in 300 300 as a default width and height to see if it does anything? Literally does nothing. Uh, no, 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 no. What? What's this? What? Yes, f***ing score boys. Surely. Surely. 
Oh, this is it. This is it. Try a little bit of this and that. Next, I uh, tried my hand back at uh, Old Mate Google, but um, uh, got a little sidetracked. I eventually found my way to Satan's Lair, um, and uh, I found, found, I found a little something. A little something. Change the OS resolution to your chosen resolution. Ah! After some of the fires cleared up and I returned home, I finally found Jesus lurking in the Unity Asset Store. Hallelujah! Auto Letterbox really came in clutch. This cleared up most of the issues, however there is still a minor difference in the aspect ratios, however we should be able to solve this now. Currently I've now begun working through the scenes and I'm scheduled to have all of Act 1 prototyped out by the end of March. This includes all the dialogue and unique gameplay sections. The Zoki team also spent a lot of time prepping and running our first game development workshop in the local area. We ran a little beginner's course on how to develop a top-down shooter and it was a great experience. We ran through the basics of coding within Unity as well as some assets creation using Pixelrama. The turnout was pog and a huge thanks to everyone who came along. We'll be running more stuff like this in the future. These holidays have been so slow, but what can you do in a national crisis? This started off as a week-long devlog and turned into a six-week recap of Jack All. Buffy thinks we'll ramp back up in the following weeks as I pass the mic over to Monarch, our lead artist. Conditions are still kinda iffy regarding the fires and Sulkin team has resumed studies. However, we will be trying our best to keep the content coming. As always, make sure to check us out on our socials and get involved with our artistic events. The community Discord server is also a really cool place for the creative people, so consider giving that a squiz while you're at it. If you've been wondering where this pretty dang funky background music came from, a massive thanks has to go out to Virtual Scones for making this chill loop for us. She's a composer of heaps of real bangers, so if you like the sound of this track, make sure you go check out her YouTube channel where she posts her full length songs. She's closing in on a thousand subs, so let's get her up there. Links are all be in the description, obviously. Thank you all for watching. In a while, crocodile.